Matt here from Matt's Movies, Music and More and my special guest Andrew welcoming you to this week's episode of What Did You Think? I'm trying hard to get a different type of the intro, you know what I mean? And we'll keep trying. <laughs> right, so if you saw our last video, the last video we had was from the WTF category and the movie that we had for that episode was Bad Boy Bubby, which was, hmm, interesting. I was about to say that. Mm, sorry, I nitpicked you there. No, no, it's your... It's your... So, um, the movie that we're replacing Bad Boy Bubby with is the 2016 movie The Greasy Strangler, which you suggested of all people. Yep. Well, I was curious about it, so... Fair enough. So, for today's movie, the Twister Spinner picked from the action category, and to replace this movie today, we're going with the 1988 action comedy classic Midnight Run, yeah. which stars Robert De Niro and Charles Grodin. One of those classics that um, I've heard about but never actually seen, so this will tick a box at least. Well, you're in for a treat on that one. If you say so. <laughs> so, on to today's movie. So, today's movie, we have landed on the 1986 John Carpenter movie, Big Trouble in Little China, which is, as I say, directed by John Carpenter, mm. and it stars... Kurt Russell, Kim Cattrall, Dennis Dunn, and James Hong as David Lopan. So, big trouble in Little China. Did you see this before it didn't come up on the Twister Spinner? Um, I have a very fuzzy memory of watching it with, um, with my dad and a few friends one uh, summer holiday okay. late at night. And... Um, Having a having a laugh at it at least, but that's about it until today. Okay. See, for me, I suggested this one to come up on the action category because I'm a huge fan of this movie. I remember as a kid seeing the cover art um, in the video shop, and um, it was in my parents' video collection, and I always loved it, but I never really understood it. And again, I hadn't seen this film for a number of years until we watched it for the for the channel, um, and. This is going to be an interesting discussion that I'm going to have with you here about this movie. So, in the best of your ability, can you try and describe what the plot of this movie is? You want me to describe what happens in Big Love Trouble in Little China, the sequential sequence of events that happen with any sense of cohesion or logical sense? As best as you can, if possible, please. Okay, well, um... Kurt Russell is Jack Burton, the uh, tough-talking uh, truck driver of the Pork Chop Express. Um, he, um, at the beginning of, actually, the be uh, beginning of the movie is actually a discussion between a lawyer and a, another secondary character, which... Um, His name's Egg Shen, right? Egg, Egg, Egg Shen, who at, at first appears to be just the bus driver of a local tourist uh, bus... Um, uh, tour of uh, Chinatown, but um, he's having this discussion after the events of the film with a lawyer and uh, trying to s establish what happened and uh, what happened to this Jack Burton. He caused a lot of property damage. You leave Jack Burton alone. He was a hero. He did great good for us, which doesn't really match up with what we see in the movie. Um, which we will go on to, but and also um, you're saying that the you, uh, you, magic happened. Well, I need proof of that. Cr crackling fingers. There's proof of that. Now let me tell you the story. And um, this never comes back, not as a framing device, nor any repercussions of this lawyer, which makes me wonder why the hell did you have that? I was waiting for this to come back, but let's get on with the uh, story. Uh, Jack Burton meets up with um, a restaurant owner. Is he a friend of his before yeah. the beginning of Wang. the movie? Yeah. Wang Chi, and um, they have a game of cards, um, which Jack wins, and... Um, Wang mentioned something about there's a phrase for that it's beginner's luck but right I've won the game give me my money please and uh, oh well I don't have the money on me right 
now also I'm kind of busy because I need to go to the airport to meet up with um, this girl my fiance well okay I'll give you a lift not book out of any favors for a friend or anything because I want to make sure you don't run off and you pay me my money at the end of it yeah. so they get to the airport uh, to meet up with uh, his fiance um what Mao uh, Ying Mao Ying who doesn't speak a line of English in the movie, I think. But uh, um, but um, before they could meet up with her, um, some um, Chinese uh, gang members turn up. The Lords of Death, we find out they're called. Who prom I think they were there to kidnap another girl who was being um, protected by Kim Cattrall's character, who we find out is a lawyer called Gracie Law. But um, Interesting surname there. Yeah, funnily enough, but um, the, oh, here's another girl. She looks much better. Let's kidnap her instead. Yeah. Cue a chase um, into an alleyway, which we find but get. They suddenly get embroiled in a fight with the Lords of Death and this nice, good Chinese group. Yeah, the fighters. Uh, the, the Chen Sing and the Wing Kong. The Wing Kong. This fight and. Um, uh, Jack and Wang are understandably, uh, uh, what the hell's going on here? And uh, the Lords of Death have extra backup. Uh, all this um, mysterious uh, Chinese sorcerer appears momentarily, but slightly more to the point is um, these uh, three um, people who look like Raiden from Mortal Kombat. Which everyone describes. Well, yes. well, straw hat, lightning powers from the fingertips, how could you not? Well, they've got a name. They're called the Three Storms. So you've got thunder, rain and lightning. Yeah, which doesn't really help much with the, um, the description the of who they are. Who they are, but no. uh, after that kind, of, after that fight, um, I think Jack gets his beloved truck stolen and they manage to escape back to Wang's... Um, I think it's like his restaurant. uncle's restaurant his, or something. His uncle's restaurant. We have the uncle. We have the, um, I think we even have the um, Egg Shen uh, bus driver who turns out to be a benevolent sorcerer. And they they quickly explain that um, the fiancé was kidnapped because um, the Chinese sorcerer, Lo Pan, who is simultaneously the Chinese sorcerer figure. And also, uh, yet at the same time, he's also... Mr. Burns in a wheelchair, <laughs> uh, but, and at the same time, he they describe him as he's a ghost. He doesn't exist in the real world, and he needs to get a new body. He needs to return to the corporeal world. To do that, he needs to marry a girl with green eyes. Mm. Because you can't get that many in China, apparently. Right. And so, oh, the fiance has been kidnapped. We have to get her. We have to go to Lo Pan's um, business um, headquarters and get her out and um, stop the marriage from happening. Explain about the corporeal world and the world of uh, Chinese sorcery. All the while, um, Jack. There. So there's that. Them explaining that and Wang explaining all this and, and Jack and all the while Jack Burt is going, now just hold on a minute here in a John Wayne kind of brawl. I don't know what's going on here. I just want my truck back. I want my money back. Yes, he's still going on about this. From there, it's infiltrate the building, rescue the fiancé, rescue the other girls that are somehow kidnapped in here, fight the thunder guys, fight the um, big muscly bodyguard guy, fight the um, strange eyeball guy. Yeah. That's all you want to say about it? Yes. Okay. Well, the first thing I'd like to say about this movie that given that I hadn't seen it for a number of years, is how much talking is in this movie. There's more talking in my eyes than there is action. Exposition, exposition, exposition. Did you know that this movie was written by W.D. Richter, who is the guy that wrote um, a movie which was a, a box office turkey, just like Big Trouble Little China was, uh, The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai. Well, that, but that does make sense now that you mention and it. And did you know that also this movie was actually primarily written as a Western? It was supposed to be a Western movie, but then they decided to make it uh, modern day and um, have it in, based in like Chinatown. I could sort of see that in at least the, uh, Jack, the Jack Burton character. And they had it as this idea that um, Jack thinks he's the hero. 
but Wang is the hero, really. See, and Jack's like the, the comic relief sidekick. That's kind of the, <clears> the, fact, the one, the, arguably the one big thing I took away from this movie watching it is um, you, you don't, you don't, you haven't seen it before. You see the posters, you hear the hype, you hear the story, you see Kurt Russell, mm. you assume he's going to be the hero. Yet a lot of the um, comedy in this is derived from the fact that Jack Burton. Um, sets himself up as this man's man this big hero and yet um it's the um the one that sorts everything out sorts out all the fights is wang um jack go throws a knife he goes to retrieve it and by the time he's got it back wang's beaten up all the bad guys uh jack uh shoots a ceiling or uh, in the big climactic fight he shoots the ceiling and is knocked out cold for most of it do you know that that scene apparently according to um what i've seen on the internet is that the studio was very unsure about how to market this movie given the fact that kurt russell is the american lead in this movie and that wang is really the hero in this film but they said, well, look, you need Jack to be fighting in this climactic ending and stuff. And they just kept coming up with excuses for ways to write him out of being involved in the fight. So when he shoots the gun and the rocks from the above the ceiling fall and hit him on the head, that knocks him out for a good few minutes while the others can fight. Ooh, yeah. And then there's a scene where I think there's a guard that's coming towards Jack and he's got like a knife within his boot. So it kind of stabs him and, and he just can't get the body he, off. And then he's stuck. Then. Yeah, he can't get the body off him. So it's keeping him out of the fight still. But um, yeah. he does, um, Is it? Uh, can we say, for a uh, 30 something year old movie, he does deliver the killing blow. Yeah. So he has that going for him. But otherwise, I, it, it, even in a comedic movie like this, the, the whole beginning scene, like I've said before, with the lawyer. Is kind of in Congress with um, hit um, Egg Shed saying Jack Burton was a hero. It's kind of a shame that that doesn't come back at the end, like you said, where it could be like, and then it goes into like a dreamy kind of flashback yeah. at the end and goes back I've, to Egg Shed. Yeah, and the I've heard rumors that that was just put in there because of producers trying to big up Jack Burton as a character in mm. however way they could, and I'm inclined to believe that. Mm. But. It's kind of like a, a maze story because they're kind of trapped in this in this underworld, I guess, of trying to escape from Lopan's um, p workplace, whatever the business yeah, is. Yeah, I don't know how he makes his money. I've got no it, idea. It's hard not to think of, even for children of the 80s like us, it's hard not to think of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom or mm. the Goonies when watching this. Well, the fact that... Um, I'll quickly mention about Gracie Law, the Kim Cattrall character, mm -hmm. is that the other spanner in the works is that not only does Miao Ying have green eyes, but so does Gracie Law. So Lo Pan decides he'll marry both. Yes. It gives something to... Supposedly, it um, gives Jack Burton a stake in, um, you know, rescuing or saving the day, even though there is a great... A great pay off at the end or lying about um, after, after the day is saved aren't you going to kiss Kim Cattrall goodbye yeah no no and that's just so funny when you see that and then she's like see you around but you know just plays off like like they're just pals but then you've also got like as we said we, we talk about the three storms thunder rain and lightning now they're very different characters I mean I think the one who has control of Lightning, the one who looks the closest to Raiden, he he doesn't really say much. He's kind of the younger looking character who sort of, you know, sets all the things up like that. You've got um, Rain, who's this long haired, thin guy, isn't he? And um, he's like, you are nowhere, he's saying his line. And then you've got Thunder, who's the most memorable, who's this big guy who throughout the movie, for some reason, he just starts doing this loud breathing in. So he's like, ah, ah, and you're like, what the hell is going on? Strange characters, isn't it? Yeah. But um, yeah, with, with Big Trouble in Little China, um, what can you say about this movie regarding like the fact that it flopped? This movie which costs quite a lot of money to make, it just flopped. Um, I've heard rumours that apparently this movie was rushed into release and production because 
Another movie was being made by another studio at the time, which was Paramount. They were making The Golden Child with Eddie Murphy. Yes. Now, have you seen that movie? Because I saw it as a kid. I don't remember much about no, it. No, just I've heard people making fun of it or pouring scorn on it. Yeah, because um, it just seems a bit of a weird one to really have two very similar looking movies out around the same sort of time. Um, Armageddon and Deep Impact. Yeah, Ants and Bugs Life and so on, so on. Um, but no, um, Lopan, James Hong. What about him? Classic veteran Asian actor. He does a good job with the whole sinister villain thing. I like it when he's when he's old Lopan in the wheelchair. He's like, um, we hear about something. He's like, ha ah, ah. ha, and he's like, he can't hear and stuff like that. It's bloody funny um, because he's like, you know, he goes, "You're looking for a girl with green eyes." He goes, "Surely you must have met loads of women with green eyes over the years, Dave." Because he's like. There have been others. There have always others. <laughs> and it's just a movie with loads of one-liners. And Jack Burton has yeah, some of the coolest lines. Yeah. He's like, you know what Jack Burton always says? And then he doesn't even sometimes finish the sentence. Yeah. Who's Jack Burton? He's like, me, Jack Burton. You know, and it is a funny movie. I really like it. But like I say, I noticed watching it this time around that it is a very dialogue-driven movie. There's more talking, I think, than action, definitely. Yeah. Um, with um, I don't know if you wanted to uh, continue with why did this movie uh, flop? Uh, I looked on the internet and uh, saw that uh, Aliens came out a couple of weeks later. Yeah, so 1986 was a big year for movies, given that. Um, but I mean, this movie cost between twenty and twenty-five million dollars to make, and it came back with an eleven million dollar um, box office gross. And I've seen interviews with both John Carpenter and Kurt Russell both saying that Fox didn't really know how to promote this movie. And in fact, Kurt Russell, I don't think, was very happy with the poster art because they picked the poster with Jack Burton on it. And it's a cartoon drawn poster of Jack Burton. It's not even a publicity still. And he's saying they just didn't know what to do with this movie. Yeah. But uh, what do you think of it? Um... I certainly had fun with it. Um, and again, I mention um, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom and the Goonies and you think... Whenever pe um, people talk about how great 80s action movies were, how that was a golden time, they usually point to movies like that. And uh, it's kind of funny how time has and cult status has um, had an effect on this, which was originally a flop, and now we... I certainly had the um, false impression in my head that this must have been a hit. Mm. But um, uh, it's a very messy kind of action movie. Like I just said, it's a bunch of things that happen. And I've heard it was um, kind of became an homage to um, Shaw Brothers action martial arts movies with all the kind of um, random chaotic um, mm. plots that occur in those. So. Fair enough, but um, it, it's easy to just um, wonder what the hell is going on here. Be good to follow Jack Burton's example of um, listening to these people describing Chinese magic and what's going on and think, hold on, I don't understand what's going on here. But mm. um, if you're, I, I'd, I'd say just um, have fun with it, have fun with um have fun with Kurt Russell. He is He's great. Um, he is the um, shining example at the uh, centre of this movie with his um, charisma and the lines of dialogue, which I think I'm sure I've heard quoted in pop culture since then, like, um, relax, everybody, I'm here, and... Um, I can uh, take anything. I can take anything, and um, I've paid my dues, and yeah. the check's in the post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we will move the pillars of heaven and earth itself. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, uh, random po okay, case in point. Uh, Double Dragon Neon. Okay. Anyone remembers that old two thousand and nine game? Um, about an undead um skeleton man who is clearly not skeletal, but he's trying to make uh, Marion his bride, and the final level is in a neon lit with pipes, secret layer with skulls and everything. I watched this movie and thought 
This is where it all came from. I get it now. Mm. But yeah, basically, I know that was a random game to bring mm. up out of the blue, but basically, think if Bill and Ted were in big trouble in Little China, that's what this game is. Mm. I'd like to bring up some facts here, which is that um, when this movie came out, like I said, with Fox and ballsing it up, really, um, it really changed the career of John Carpenter as a film director because given the fact that he had primarily been an independent filmmaker making things like Assault and Precinct 13 and then obviously hitting it big with Halloween and then making some of his other classic movies like Escape from New York with Kurt Russell and The Fog and then um, he would go on in 1982 to make the uh, movie for Universal Studios The Thing which was a box office disaster in 1982 but the problem you have with The Thing is that that movie was released at a time where the biggest film on the planet was E.T. So whatever movie you released in 1982, and they were all great sci-fi movies there, E.T., Tron, Blade Runner, etc., they were never going to beat uh, E.T. Um, so to have the thing be a flop, but it's become a cult classic, um, that was one of his first bad experiences. And then obviously he'd go along and do things like Christine and... He picked up um, um, Starman, which was a movie with Jeff Bridges, which I think was nominated for Oscars. I can't remember exactly. So he had a little bit of Hollywood success. Then this movie came along and sadly it, that, ruined, it ruined it for him. The last straw for yeah, him. Yeah, so he decided to go a bit more independent. So he started making movies like uh, two movies that were made sort of back to back, Prince of Darkness and They Live. And... They're both very good films. Uh, Prince of Darkness is very... I, I would say that it has a lot in common with this film, given that there's a few actors from this film, Big Trouble Little China, in Prince of Darkness. But They Live, I love. I think what a great movie that is. And hopefully we'll talk about that on Matt's movie at some point. Yeah. But um, finally, I suppose, before we wrap up this video, um, I asked you to check it out. I don't know if you did at all. But um, what did you think of... The end credits song, Big Trouble in Little China. Oh, I knew there was something I was supposed to do yesterday. <laughs> you don't remember it? Um, I, I'm going to have to leave you to just describe it. I do apologise. No, that's fine. That's not a problem. There is a song that is for the end credits of the music, which is Big Trouble in Little China, which um, is essentially by John Carpenter. Um, it has this really really funny music video that was made for it and it features in the music video John Carpenter, Tommy Lee Wallace and Nick Castle who are all three famous film directors in their own right and I love the song I think the song is great and it's very cheesy 80s apparently though John Carpenter was told to do that even though he didn't really want to he he felt that he had already composed the music so you know um they just did that, and um, I like the music for this movie. What do you think of the music as as background music for the rest of the movie? Background music is right. I wasn't paying attention to it, but that doesn't mean I hate it or anything. It uh, it does its job. Because I mean, Carpenter obviously composes a lot of his music, so you know, I I think the music he does is a great job. Um, the the band that he came up with the name for was called the Coupe de Villes, which um, that was the name of the band for that song, right. but. Um, I think John Carpenter is a composer for his films, a music composer. I think he does a great job, and he, he tends to compose most of the music for his movies, so he's a very talented jack-of-all-trades in a way, I guess. Mm. But, uh, yeah, so Big Trouble Little China, I love it. As a kid, I loved it, and I still love it now. But like I say, I've noticed it's more of a talky movie as I've gotten older. It just it kind of feels in places where it drags, and it does feel like it's very much like Let's get on to the next thing. We need to get on because it's very slow. But the characters, I guess, are describing the plot so that you can keep your um, your in invested time in this movie, right? I could I agree with the I agree with the talky point. Um, this is a movie that has um, Raiden from Mortal Kombat characters. It's got a Chinese sorcerer who's also a man in a wheelchair. It's got a floating eyeball thing. It's got um, Chinese uh, martial artists. It's got this hairy yeti Sasquatch monster. Um, this is a mess as far as um, a 
plot or a story goes, but it's a fun, entertaining mess. It's uh, it's probably said about sounding like old men because it was in the eighties. It was made with practical effects and care and proper action, and it's an engaging for that. And um, like like we've said, I, f I think a big part of it, of course, is Jack Russell as uh, Kurt Russell as, as, as Jack Burton as yeah, Kurt <laughs> Russell. I knew I was going to do that. I have a question though, which is one little bit, which is. Given that there's quite a lot of homages in this movie to other types of genres, such as westerns and uh, martial arts and whatever, did you notice the slight Star Wars-ish nod, which was there is a scene between Lopan and Egg Shen as the two sorcerers, and they have these magical oh, rings, yeah. and it's kind of like a video game where they're sort of fighting with one, for, one side being green and the other side being like a purple it's kind of like the the Rebel Alliance and the Dark Side, right? It would have been a, I'm sure it would have been a subconscious influence on everybody by that point in the eighties. But do you see? What, do you, would you agree with my my visualizing of that? Yeah, now, that you've pointed, now that you've pointed it out, yes. Yeah, and yeah. it does look a bit video gameish, doesn't it? With Lopan sort of doing it with his fingers, it looks like I'm controlling yeah. it now. Yeah, it's fun. It's funny, and. Um, but another f thing I found on the internet is that there have been rumours for years about let's remake this movie because why not? We're remaking everything else, aren't we? Mm -hmm. let's, let, we can't have imagination anymore because that doesn't make money. Um, and with The Rock as That's uh, the Jack big Burton, rumor. Yep. which makes me feel, no, you're missing the point of who Jack Burton is as a character, as a doofus, as a... Um, mm. As a bumbler, um, I probably say this just purely because of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. But if you're going to remake it, please uh, first, please don't. But uh, Chris Pratt, you forget though. For example, John Carpenter uh, has made many movies that have been remade over the years. You could start with Assault and Precinct Thirteen. That was remade um, into a pretty average movie. Uh, Halloween, in a way, has been remade by Rob Zombie. Um, the Fog has been remade, a terrible remake. Um, and um, The Thing has technically not a remake, more of a prequel. So he, he clearly, there's clearly something there to remake John Carpenter movies. Yeah, but are they any good? That's the thing, is that I understand that if you do it, and you do it right, then great. But... I don't really see the point of remakes unless it's a way of saying, oh, if you like this, you'll like the original. Um, but a lot of people just want to go into the new ones. Like, as a good example, the recent Evil Dead remake, um, which I thought was really good, um, but it's nowhere near as good as the original, but it's still pretty good. And the Dawn of the Dead remake, yeah, even. I agree with the Evil Dead there, at least. Yeah, so, yeah, so I just hope for, for everyone's sake, and the same with Escape from New York, they've even rumoured that they want to do a remake of that too. Please no, don't. Of course they do. Please don't. We don't want remakes of these classic movies. They're fine the way they are. What's next? 2001 Space Odyssey remake? God, can't be having this. Well, they did do 2010 and uh, 2061 and 3001 were books that were never adapted. So. Yeah, we, we just need to draw the line around the remakes, but hopefully that might be something we might cover at some point on this channel, I hope, in the near future. But overall, Big Trouble Little China, for me, I love it. I think it's a, it's a classic of yeah. my childhood, and it's a film that I'll always remember fondly to this day. Okay. Um, I, if, if I had grown up with this as a child, I might be remembering this more fondly. But I, for the one single time that I've watched this properly, I had fun with it. For me, it's one of those ones that summarises my VHS collection. It was one of those films I had in my VHS collection, and I, and I still love it to this day. Yeah. So... Yeah, okay. Big Trouble Little China. Ah, and here it is. It's Twist has been a time. So without further ado, let's see what it's going to pick for the next episode. <laughs> ah, mm. it's landed on horror. Great, Ooh. great. You know I love my horror on this channel. So, what have we got for horror? We have got the 1973 British movie, Psychomania. 
also known as the Death Wheelers in America. Um, do you know that one? A. Psychomania. It's um, a I movie want... with um, biker zombies, basically. Oh. I was going to make a joke about was that some 80s death metal punk band, but then you mentioned Could the be. Year, so Could be. Anything's I possible. I can't really make that joke anymore. Anything's possible. So, um, yeah. So, we hope that um, when we do that video, hopefully you guys will have a lot of fun because Psychomania is something that I like and I suggested for this channel. Yeah. So, like many of the ones I've suggested, I guess. So, um, I hope you all enjoyed that one too. We've got some good things planned for that. So... Yeah. Going back to Big Trouble in Little China, what did you guys think of Big Trouble in Little China? Is it a movie that you really like? Is it a movie you hate? Do you want to see a remake? Do you not want to see a remake? Um, so, um, yeah, thanks for checking out the video today. And don't forget to like and subscribe to all the channel and to Facebook, Instagram and Twitter to find out everything more, including all our series at the Movies with Andrew. What did you think? And all the solo videos that I've got coming up as well. So... Yeah, thank you very much, everybody. And uh, a final statement from this? No. No? What do you mean, no? Because that's what Jack Burton said. Oh, yeah, wasn't that one of the last lines he says in the movie? It was like, are you going to kiss Jack? No. <laughs> thank you very much, everybody, and all the bring, best to oh, you. Oh, maybe bring down the thunder. <laughs> all the best, everybody. Goodbye.